HTML chapter, we learned the basics of creating websites. Now it's time to take things a step further and add some visual flair with CSS. CSS is an acronym that stands for Cascading Style Sheets. This is a separate language from HTML that allows you to make your plain vanilla pages look just about any way you want them to. In the HTML chapter, I mentioned that HTML describes the structure of a web page rather than its presentation. With CSS, you describe the presentation of a web page, but you don't describe its content. By completely separating content and presentation, you can easily reformat HTML or even huge websites just by changing a few lines of CSS. There are numerous other benefits to separating structure and presentation, such as improved accessibility, more flexibility, decreased complexity, and more. This is a website called CSS Zen Garden, and it's a very classic example of what makes CSS so great. Now I'm going to switch between a few style sheets here, and it looks like I'm switching between a bunch of completely different websites, but that's not the case at all. If you look closely at the contents of the page, you can see that it's actually exactly the same content. What you're seeing is exactly the same HTML, but with different style sheets being applied. Simply pointing the same HTML document to different style sheets, you can swap out colors, typography, page layout, background images, and more. Basically, anything that has to do with the presentation of the content. Now consider this block of code. Most of the time, a style rule looks like this. First, you'll have what's called a selector. The selector allows you to choose or select what HTML elements on your page you would like to be styled. In this example, we're selecting all the paragraph tags on the page. After the selector, you have a space and an opening and closing curly brace. This is simply a container for the CSS rules that you'll be applying to your selected HTML element. Inside the curly braces are CSS properties. The two properties being utilized here are color and font weight. Each property is followed by a set of rules such as red or bold, and then the line ends with a semicolon. Here we're saying that we would like all the paragraphs on our page to be red, and that we would also like all the paragraphs to be in bold text. There are numerous selectors and numerous properties, and when these simple rules are combined together with HTML, they are capable of producing visuals of enormous complexity and variety. The style sheet part of cascading style sheets should be more obvious to you at this point, but what about the cascading part? Well, there are several ways to include style sheets into a web page. You can write CSS code inline into an HTML page with the style tag, but typically you'll place your CSS in a separate plain text file with the .css extension. Some simple websites might only use one CSS file, but most complex websites have multiple style sheets. CSS uses a priority scheme to decide what rules to apply to a particular element, if there are multiple rules matching the same element that conflict with one another. In essence, style rules can override one another, so the order that I include my CSS rules and files matters quite a bit. The rules at the top of a CSS file can be overridden by rules towards the bottom of the CSS file, and the first CSS file to be included in a web page can be overridden by rules in the last CSS file. The CSS specification is maintained by the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C for short. This is the same organization that maintains the HTML standard amongst numerous other standards. Currently, the recommended version of CSS is version 2.1. However, similar to the HTML5 specification, CSS3 is in draft form, and it's being adopted by web browsers very quickly. Not to worry though, CSS3 is backward compatible with CSS2.1, so everything you learn in this series will be completely applicable even long after CSS3 is fully adopted. An HTML page can exist without CSS, but the default browser stylings are pretty boring. In the next video, we'll get into some code and learn how to include CSS.